All right, we're live on Ranger Radio, about to watch a great MLTP matchup between the Capitalists and the Rolling Golden Boulders. With me on Ranger Radio today is co-commentator Kitten Panda. Hello there. Good to be with you again, Ranger. Very good to be with you again, sir. I think I need to go get some kind of alcoholic beverage from the fridge. Mm. Hold on, let's make sure they don't start. Don't start. <laughs> I'm getting a beer. There we go. <clears throat> so it looks like they're going to play this half on Sphere. We'll see how that goes, because we're playing an Origin team versus a Center team. So see if Sphere decides to cooperate with everybody today. Yeah, Sphere is usually doing fairly well. Um, I'd imagine that it's going to be doing all right today. I think I'm going with another Backwoods Bastard tonight. I'm not sure if that's what I had last time you and I did this together. but I think that's an excellent selection. Yeah, good Founders beer. One of my yeah. favorites here on Range Radio. I'm just sitting here with my fruity Mike's Hard Lemonade. That's what you were drinking last time, too. I know. It's like nice. it's like we're gonna have to have a tradition. I like it. Oh, I do too. All right, I'm back. Let's see if these guys are ready. <clears throat> Ricochet is gonna stream my stream. <laughs> That's awesome. He's gonna co he's gonna commentate our commentating. <laughs> oh boy. I feel the pressure. I kind of wish I had a camera set up right now to be able to show you this little itty bitty glass that I have. It's like a four ounce tasting glass. Perfect for this. Ooh. So what do you expect to see from this matchup today? Um... I am interested to see who else will be starting for uh, Copernicus' team, but um, Halsey is easily one of the best offensive players in Tag Pro, or at least North American Tag Pro right now. And I think that um, I really like their lineup. I'm kind of favoring them a little bit right now. Yeah, the Capitalists have, have really impressed everybody this, this season. I mean, I think, you know, other than... The unpleasantness related to the botting scandal with Checkmate, which I don't think really impacts them that much, at least on the major level. Um, Certainly not. You know, seeing seeing this lineup right now that's in, these are four excellent players, and you know I expect them to do very well with that lineup. Um, I have had the pleasure of streaming a few RGB matches, and um, seeing Ibis and Private Major together on defense, um, it's like a clinic. As a defensive player, I love watching them because I learn so much about the decision making and how they work together on contains and then couple that with just a great just technical play i mean there's certain things that are about thinking when it comes to tag pro like tag pro iq and then there's other things that are just about how well can you control your ball and make it do the things it needs to do and you know ibis and pm just exemplify both i think that if you're looking for the textbook defense you're absolutely going to be looking at ibis and private major They've certainly been able to handle themselves really well today. In terms of solo play on defense, you have people like Mr. Thought who go for their grab defense and are excelling at it right now. Um, but in terms of how well a pairing is playing, I I completely agree with you. I would rather watch Ibis and PM all day, every day. Yeah, very excited. I know, uh, you know RGB is just coming off of a sweep last week, and uh, the Capitalists, I think they're still in first place. Is that correct? I believe so. I can double check that, they, but it they, wouldn't spread. They're either me. in first place or very close to it. So it looks like we're launching. Um, again, this is going to be on Sphere. And our first game today will be on Iron, followed by a game on 45. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Much to the chagrin of quite a few people. So we'll switch over to our in-game view. So we've got three rolling bombs. Looks like uh, Eagles and Holsey probably have the inside track towards that RB. Three, but uh, actually, really, two, both teams have a pretty good spawn for this. 
This is going to be a fairly weak beginning, I think. Rolling bombs aren't really the yeah. best to start off games. Well, and, and it actually ironically hurt. Copernicus was able to win that pup, but he wound up spiking himself as a result of getting a rolling bomb and defusing it, so... And they're already all gone. Yeah. Kind of an all interesting situation boys. where you see no pups in play <laughs> at the beginning of the game. Yeah, it, it does feel a little awkward right now, like everybody's just doing a little salsa with each other. Yeah. So Holsey had an opportunity there, but Ibis just took the right angle, and the blocks were uh, pretty well pretty well established, but Ballstar was able to get himself in front and get a return. Unfortunately for them, the blocks were more towards the uptick, and he was able to use the roll off of that instead of being pushed down into the left corner yeah, exactly. of their base. Exactly. Exactly. So another round of pops. Ballstar is going to take this opportunity to grab, but he gets contained and popped. So PM is going to be able to get their rolling bomb uncontested. Uh, Dodds fall with the tag pro. It looks like they don't want Private Major to go on offense. I don't know if it's just a, a lack of trust on, on the flag or what. So they fought for button at all costs there, and it wound up being a good strat. That was definitely a tough situation for the capitalists. Would you say that this matchup on the right is one of the premier matchups we're going to see this weekend in terms of offensive and defensive prowess? I think so. I mean, I think, you know, as you've pointed out already, Holsey is, you know, one of the best pure offenders in, in uh, majors right now and uh, just taking the league by storm. So seeing seeing him try to challenge, I think, one of the best defensive pairings, I would consider that to be a marquee matchup. But on the other side of the ball, we have you know some very talented players as well, um, Dots Fall and Eagles on that side battling Nakoba and Copernicus. So really a lot to see on both sides. Definitely. I could have sworn that was point two six right there from Halsey. It, it seemed like it was a little more than a quarter of a second. So Halsey with the juke juice. I don't think he's going to be able to get around three here, though, so private major able to get the return. Even with it crowded right there, while you're watching him juke around, all, all I can really think is, holy crap, he's going to make it through. It's, it's <laughs> terrifying as a defender to see how well these guys play, even when they do get popped. So, some good button strats. Dodds fall be able to get the button for Ballstar, but Copernicus and uh, PM able to get in front and provide some good offensive D there. Ballstar's still alive. This is kind of a situation where I would have played anti re because now they're going to be on a chain, but they were out of position, so it was better that somebody was there. Yeah. The other advantage of playing anti there is you're able to contest the uh, pup spawn, which Halsey was able to get uncontested. And mm -hmm. he uses that re-grab to walk it in and get a good cap. There's some good blocks there in place by Dots Fallen Eagles. The blocks were really good, but that was a little bit of a misplay by Nakoba in the overcommit, especially with Juke Juice. You want to be able to stay within the realm of where you'll be able to pop somebody in order to just stay in front of the flag. Ooh. That was a hell of an effort there to get through. Yeah, absolutely. So with about uh, six minutes left in the first half, currently a one nothing lead for the Capitalist, holds you out. Um, trying to get past two, and he does, so the defense is now behind, but PM able to stay on, on message there and get back in front. I really do love the way that PM and Ibis are rotating with each other. If you see Ibis going non-aggressive, then PM's going aggressive and vice versa. It doesn't allow the, the offender to get into a comfortable scheme where they can know exactly where one person's going and every avenue is covered perfectly. So another round of pups, two tag pros for the Capitalists. Uh, currently, Holsey able to take the last few seconds of that tag pro and keep PM out of base. Dots fall able to get the button, so Ballstar can walk it in gate. Two nothing that, Capitalists. That was textbook right there. And it was certainly a little bit of luck on the power-ups, but again, it was more the Capitalists playing that well versus anything else. Oof. Oh. Nakoba able to split dots, fall on the Eagles, get out ahead of two top. That was silly. 
Oh, an oh. opportunity. Nakoba able to score a nice cap there. I that whole, that whole, that yeah, that whole play from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen was very nice by Nakoba. He got a little bit fortunate the way that some of the boost physics worked down there. It wound up clearing a path for him, but uh, just very ballsy, very strong play. It was definitely uh, a ballsy play. I mean, he, he certainly took advantage of uh, his teammate being there to roll off of, and that worked to his advantage. I. I still felt like I was watching the play in slow motion. It was so strange. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to go back and watch that one later and really break down what happened. <laughs> Definitely. Nice juke by Eagles to get out of base. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Eagles is going to be able to get through that gate. Dots fall holding it for him, but Ibis and PM in front of that flag again. Eagles is going to try to use the bomb to cap, and he does. Oh, my God. Very nice bomb angle taken by Eagles. The blocks were in place. Dots fall, uh, putting up a nice block for him to be able to do that. They're putting on a little bit of a show right now with these perfectly executed plays. So Ball Star is going to go re up that tag pro, it looks like. And he does. So he'll get uh, almost 40 seconds of tag pro. This is going to be a big concern for yeah, the this Rolling is dangerous. Golden Boulders. This is dangerous if Holsey gets a good grab here. And Ballstar accidentally, uh, I don't think he was trying to grab there, but he goes flag pro and looks like this is going to allow. Oh, Ibis oh. taking a rare bad boost and uh, winds up blocking his own teammate out. Holsey has an opportunity here, um, but all three balls in front of him again. Oh, Holsey, please! I'm done. I'm retiring. I'm not worthy. Okay, oh my this god. Is... Oh. So Nakoba does save a cap there. Things were. Uh, Seeming like they're getting out of hand, but Nakoba out ahead of three. Holsey gonna be patient here, wait for his team to get there, and now when, in place. When I was talking to my team earlier about this map, it, it has a lot of the same principles that a map like Velocity does, in that it's very fast paced. It has a boost that you have to hit exactly right to get exactly what you want, and its limited amount of power ups make the power ups that you do get. Uh, much more valuable. All right, so an opportunity here. Dotsfall not able to get Button in time. Uh, they were off containing the last guy, but uh, both flags back in base now. Two I heard Dotsfall dropped out of Koi's Button School. <laughs> not everybody passes Kitten Panda. Oh, I know. <laughs> All too well. Currently a four cap advantage for the capitalists over the rolling golden boulders. Nakoba used some good Ooh. misdirection there, but Eagles has the snipe. It's going to be important in these last two minutes for the rolling golden boulders not only to stop the bleeding, but they're going. Sorry. <laughs> they're going to have to settle a little bit. Nice. Ooh, wow. Ballstar takes a nice boost and just barely pixels himself past Ibis. This could be a cap. Nope. Nakoba's able to get in there and grab. And Ballstar has to take a lap and he gets returned. Nakoba playing savior right now. It should be like 6 1 7 1 right now. So Copernicus is going to go ahead and buy some time with about a minute left. The boulders are going to need a cap here, I think, to get at least a little bit of momentum back. Power-ups are going to be super important, too, at yeah, this I stage. Yeah, I think Cap's going to try to go get his base, but just doesn't show up for him at the right time. He's forced He's to lucky abandon out a little it. bit right now. It's a little bit of a mess for them, but they're still managing somehow. So Copernicus with return for Ooh. cap situation, but no longer. Dots fall and Eagles in front. 15 seconds to go. Eagles has... Tag Pro is now gone, but able to get around Nakova. Halsey scores yet another cap. Yeah! Oh, they've got to be careful here. 
I think if they had had a couple more seconds, they would have been able to get that button and get him in. So currently 6-1 advantage for the Capitalists. Four caps in that half for, in that half for Holsey. Uh, 11 returns for Eagles. Um, I think this is the first half I've seen all year where Ibis and Private Major have not been able to contain the opposing offense. That was a really concerning looking half, at least if you're a Holden, rolling gold and boulders fan. I'm sorry. Um, you can say RGB. It's okay. RGB. Yeah, there we go. Um, in terms of decision making, it certainly looked like there, especially with that snipe attempt at the end, that they were just getting frustrated. And this is going to be something that they're going to have to overcome going into the second half of this game if they're going to want any chance of coming back. Unfortunately, um, with a five-cap lead, it's not insurmountable, but it's certainly something that's going to be intimidating, especially on the tail end of uh, somewhat of a demotivating end of the half. Absolutely, and I have to wonder to what extent um, either ping or server issues play in. I know that a lot of West Coast folks have been having trouble getting on Sphere and having it play well for them, and you know, not not to make assumptions, but I'm just wondering if that could have been a factor in this first half. Perhaps. That is, that is a little bit of a concern. Um, I know that there were some center issues this week right now, so you have to wonder if that was affecting practices too. All right, so a thank you to all of our uh, viewers on Ranger Radio. We have uh, 26 viewers right now. Thank you for joining us tonight for a great MLCP matchup. Currently a 6-1 advantage for the Capitalists over RGB. Uh, yes, Eagles. Yes, thank you to everybody who's listening and uh, watching. I certainly uh, appreciate having everybody here, and I appreciate Ranger giving me the opportunity to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good commentary and good uh, good companionship. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. I actually really enjoy watching the Capitalists as well. I think I streamed either their first or second game of the season. And uh, they were extremely receptive after that. They were really, really nice. Yeah, I think it's great that we've we've all stepped up as a community to stream more of our majors and minors games. So I got kicked out there. We'll I see if I can well. get back in the group. I think everybody did. Yeah, I'm getting kicked back to group. So I'm just going to assume that that's a everybody problem right now. Somebody in chat, Diamond Anus. That sounds awful. Um, said that <laughs> you should zoom in a little more. Um, yeah, because I do have an in-game view that does zoom in, but usually I leave the walls as part of it. Um, I can't really zoom in too much more than that, otherwise it's going to cut off the either bottom or top tile. So I'll do what I can, try to zoom in as much as possible, though, for our viewers. That's why you guys should always watch Ranger Radio, because he listens to feedback. Absolutely. Diamond Anus. Who is Diamond Anus? Do we know who that is? I don't know. Because I've seen that Reddit name before, and it's it's somebody that we would know of. I just don't think I remember. I'm, like, feeling the need to put a pillow underneath my ass. I'm feeling so, like, weird right now. Just thinking about Diamond Anus. So this Anus. is our zoomed out, and this is our zoomed in view for our viewers. Does that mean they poop gems or something? They poop gems, yes. That'd be awesome. Not like the player gem. They don't poop the player gem. Because <laughs> I feel like that would be painful. <laughs> All right, so I will zoom in. There we go. So now that wall is kind of zoomed out, so we do still have that very edge tile, but that is as far as I can zoom in without cutting off um, Three, the left or right border. Two, one. All right, so we have uh, two juke juices and a rolling bomb. Again, no tag pros in this. Um, it is a 6-1 advantage for the Capitalists, who are now on blue, against the Rolling Golden Boulders, who are now on red. Balls are able to make a nice boost grab, but not able to get around the Abyss. Now that you mention it, it does, ooh, it does look a little awkward for their team. Yeah, I'm just wondering, because... I think where you really see ping issues is on the defensive side because the offense doesn't necessarily need low ping to be able to make good jukes because a lot of it is decision making. But defensively, if you're trying to contain with, you know, 50 or 100 ping or you, you know, you have jitters or whatever, it's really hard to be in the right place at the right time to stop somebody from juking around you. Hmm. I mean, at the same time, having a really good ping 
uh, you can think that you're in one place and then suddenly you're like a couple inches away. It's a little bit awkward as an offender. So another round of pops about to spawn. Everybody in place to get them. Holsey able to get uh, pop over in red base. Gets a tag pro. And uh, Ibis wasn't on the right side of that boost to be able to snipe there. So looks like Ballstar might be able to get out ahead of three. And if the blocks are real, Nakoba takes the inside track and is able to get to flag in time. So Ballstar going to take another quick lap. And an opportunity here. Ooh. Ballstar took that boost really well off the corner, but um, good offensive D by the Rolling Golden Boulders to prevent a cap there. Risky strats, man. Risky. See, I liked him forcing it there because I mean that that would have worked the majority of the time. I think. I think it was definitely the right play. I think it just developed a little awkwardly. So another round of pups. Everybody in position. Ooh. So it looks like uh, the Rolling Golden Boulders uh, dominate this round of pops, getting all three of them two tag pros and a juke juice. So they'll keep one on D and take one on O. Nakoba waiting for uh, a teammate to get there to take advantage of this tag pro, and nobody gets there in time, so he just goes flag pro, and that's going to uh, be it. Unfortunately, Copernicus made a critical mistake in grabbing 1v2, then backing himself into... An impossible corner to get out of, even with Juke Juice. Uh, these defenders are too good quality for him to be able to get out in that situation. After that, he wasn't able to make it back, and it was really three power-ups wasted. That would have been a huge, huge opportunity. Absolutely agree. So another round of Pops getting ready to spawn. Copernicus going to grab, and he's not able to get out. So Nakoba going to get that re-grab, and... I think everybody else now is starting to think Pops. Nakoba as well. He's going to go and grab a Juke Juice in blue base. So here's an opportunity. Ibis able to put a nice block down on Holsey to allow Nakoba to walk in with that Juke Juice. That was a perfectly executed block. Perfectly executed play. Really nice, John. That's what I'm more used to seeing out of these guys. Same. So, oh, some opportunities here. Oh... Ooh. Good play by Dodds Fall to be able to initially block and then ultimately get a grab and get out of base. That was definitely a clutch a play. So currently a four cap lead, six to two aggregate for the capitalists. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was a really nice bomb by Private Major. It might not result in him living for that much longer, but still a decent play is smart play it's it's when you see what people term as tag pro iq you know just an awareness of how to use the map elements to be able to either stay alive or when it's a good idea to do one thing versus another holsey with a rolling bomb able to uh, make his way towards his base uh if nakoba gets returned here okay this could be an opportunity holsey able to walk it in and get a nice cap with his rolling bomb Kind of a concerning position once again. Ball star there completely trusting his teammate Dodds Fall to get that button for him, and he does, but not able to make anything of it. Nakoba with some nice jukes around Eagle is able to get out ahead of two, but uh, an unfortunate bomb by Private Major kicks Nakoba back to blue base. But looks like he might still be able to get out now. Eagle's able to take a boost and get him. What I'm concerned about for RGB right now is with the way that they're moving the way that they're playing oh, that was a heck of a bomb by the way yeah that was such a nice bomb the communication seems to be lacking at least in the in the fast situations and that was one of the other concerns on this map when i was talking about velocity you have to make decisions so fast and it's just difficult in a lot of situations yeah ibis uh actually saved a cap there with his tag pro in good positioning there that was very nice He certainly made the best of that situation. Ooh. Alright, so another opportunity here for RGB. No re-grab in place yet. Nakoba getting there, but 
little bit too late to have an advantage. And takes <laughs> what a beautiful bomb to split Eagles and Ballstar and survive a little bit longer. But Eagles is just a master of using those boosts to get a nice snipe. Holsey Ooh. out ahead of three. Looks like uh, Nakoba might be able to catch up to him, and he does. Gets in front. That was a great boost by Nakoba, but again, the communication, the breakdown just... It's so awkward at this. Yeah, and it was such yeah. unfortunate timing there because for Holsey because that uh, rolling bomb spawned about a second after he already committed to go the other direction. Dodds fall possible return for Cap here. See if he can, and he does get his own return. Ultimately, that rolling bomb uh, sends the opposing team into the gate, and he's able to sit on the flag top for a cap. These grabs are still very concerning. A lot of the oh wow. I don't know how Copernicus is alive, but he should be playing Eagles, a lot. Eagles, please. Of... Wow. Oh, nice wow. Angle. So currently a 8-2 to two advantage for the Capitalists. Copernicus stealing Nakoba's boost, but not sure it would have mattered. Uh, if they can get this return, I'm pretty sure they will. This will be a cap. Nice job. Private Major and Chris able to secure a base and allow Nakoba to survive long enough to cap there. Good plays all around there for the uh, Rolling Golden Boulders. It's definitely good plays. They were able to take advantage of uh, a 3v2 situation, and it looks like they're getting their power-ups more spot-on. Uh, I'm not sure if they're winning the majority. I don't have a script or anything, but so far, so good. Even despite the 2-2 tie. Mm, Private Major making a questionable choice there. Winds up boosting behind, and that winds up being the difference. Uh, Balser able to walk it through the gate held by Dodge Ball there. I know I said that these guys are textbook defenders, but this game they're making some snipe choices that are looking more on the flashy end of things instead of for practical defensive purposes. Yeah, it, it just felt like Private Major hesitated and wasn't sure which way he was going to take that boost and then maybe thought about trying to snipe and then didn't and then chose to snipe when it was too late, whereas he yeah. could have taken the boost to boost right and get in front of the defense. So it was uh, oh, yeah. it was an interesting... I don't know if I want to call it a lapse. It was just a, it was a different judgment than we're used to seeing from him. It might have been a slight lapse, but at the, at the I'm just time, I'm just trying not to right. call anything he does a lapse, considering that <laughs> these guys are about a hundred times better than I am. So I'm just imagining like Wayne's World. I'm not worthy. <laughs> Something like that. Holsey able to get out ahead of uh, PM with his juke juice, but Ibis also with the juke juice able to track him down top. That was. Well, that's one of those things that you watch these defenders, and that was a really good defensive play. You saw the micro juke by, uh, I can't remember who had the flag right there. I have a terrible memory, but whoever had the flag executed a perfect micro juke to try and get around, but Ibis didn't buy it. I think it was. It was uh, Halsey, I think. Halsey, yeah. Um. So with one minute left to go, currently a. Six cap lead for the capitalists, so this game is pretty well in the books. Both teams at this point just uh, starting to think about that next game. Well, you certainly want to get a, a positive end to this if you're RGB. Uh, even if you get just a cap, um, it's definitely a momentum thing at this point. So Private Major takes a nice boost through the spikes to be able to get ahead and slow uh, Ball Star down. It was able to come behind and get that return. Um, Holsey's still alive here. Managing to live pretty long, but no one there in his base to provide any logistical support. It's just padding the fantasy stats at this point. Two. All right. So the end of a great first game of the day on Iron the Rolling Golden Boulders fall by a score of 9-3 to three to the Capitalists, who win their first game of the day. That was certainly a dominating performance by the Capitalists, who are looking just as good, if not better, than uh, when I casted them a few weeks ago. Dodd's fall was especially impressive that game, going 17-6 and six with a cap. Um, this he's certainly impressed in Sokol, and now he's definitely looking like the star that he is in our MLTP. Yeah, I know a lot of people have talked this year about 
whether or not there's a skill gap or a disparity between, you know, the Centra teams and some of the East Coast teams. And, you know, I know that uh, the Capitalists are a origin team technically, but I think it's just interesting. This is one of those, in my mind, premier matchups between, you know, one of the top Centra teams versus one of the top non-Centra teams. And, you know, if that last game was any indication, there might be a good argument that maybe there's a little bit more either talent or skill um, you know, in the middle or eastern half of the country versus the west. But we'll have to see how things go on 45. We might see a completely different team. I think that it's going to be a different game. I mean, the final score didn't really tell the tale. I, that was a one-cap game that time around. So um, I think that the first half was maybe working out the kinks. And uh, 45 really brings out a, a different level of play. Uh, because it's a different style of map. Um, I think whoever gets their momentum going, though, is going to be the one keeping it for a lot of the game. We'll just tree out another link and maybe get a few more viewers. So starting out on 45, our second match of the day. Um, Capitalists are going to be in blue, taking on RGB in red, and a Tag Pro in both bases, so both teams will start out with the Tag Pro. Looks like they'll both opt to keep that on defense. Let's see if there's any... Oh, that's about as far as I can zoom this in. Alright, so Copernicus able to get out ahead of two, going mid, and Ballstar takes a... Uh, missed boost, so there's an opportunity here for an early cap by RGB, but Dots fall able to get in and grab and save that cap from happening. Sure, in our right view. Okay, cool. So a little bit of a re-grab chain so far for RGB. It's a really good start for RGB. The train is going to be something important to hang on to. That's the three times now that they've been able to get back into their own base with the flag. Looks like this will be four, but the blocks looks like they're in place. Nicole able to slow down just in time. Ibis had a nice block there for him to allow that cap. Excellent, excellent start by RGB, and that's exactly what they needed after last game. It's, cer it's certainly going to be interesting from here on out. Uh, fortunately for the Capitalists, they played anti, um, but we'll see if they can get another train going. Copernicus with a, uh, a short return for cap scenario there. That return came just about a second too late, unfortunately, for them. It was able to get a nice return near that mid button. I'll be eager to see if we, um, if we see any boosts through the spikes. See if either team is uh, ever in a position to take that boost through the spikes, because I've always been I... <laughs> impressed with the, the confidence that uh, some players seem to exhibit on that boost. I, I feel like I only hit it about half the time, so not a play I... I'd probably use in competitive. I have not hit it once in my life. <laughs> I remember practicing that for about four or five hours one day. I just opened up it's a like... map test and just practicing. Not it's four or five hours, but probably it. an hour. I'm pretty sure I would only hit by accident. Oh, it's and like, Ballstar uh, winds up backing Holsey yeah. and Ibis there for a return, so this could be an opportunity. Dotsfall has a tag pro in red base, so probably nothing going here. Holsey able to Oof. get revenge there and get that return. Nikoba might want a little... Well, it's hard to be patient while you're waiting for the re-grab in that situation, but good play. Yeah, it's kind of a situation where you're getting the base and you're giving your team an opportunity to cap, but there's already three blue balls in red base at that point, and, you know, do you feel like the blocks are really going to be there, or do you feel like um, you can just be patient, maybe hope to get a pup? I would, I always have a really hard time being patient on this map because it's just so, oh, Copernicus it's like winds a up. long velocity. Yeah. Exactly. Copernicus winds up kind of walking into a dangerous situation there. You back in uh, blue base and winds up getting uh, pretty easily returned. Oof. 
so both flags reset. Definitely a map where I think we're going to see a few more resets just because of how long it is. We're, we're going to have situations where we're not always going to have regrab in place before the flag carrier gets returned. And so far in our chat straw poll, we only have two votes for the capitalists. Eagles does a nice job top. of holding a button there, but uh, unfortunately the poost there winds up getting his own return. That was definitely an awkward poost. The poost was real. Ooh. Huh. That was, that was kind of nice from Holsey using the two top boosts to uh, totally misdirect his opponents, but he kind of cornered himself there, unfortunately. Yeah, kind of an awkward situation. Those boosts, you can use them for a lot of different things. Oh, and... Ibis winds up getting... Oh. He winds up spiking himself there, and that winds up being uh, how, how Ballstar was able to get into base there so easily. Nice blocks by his team, so 1-1 one, one tie. The cap was so fast, it was just... It, it felt like it just flew by. Holsey making some nice moves to stay alive, and... Uh, not able to stay alive long enough, though. Ibis tracks him down, though. Ballstar will be able to get out ahead of two here. If they can get this return on Nakoba, but no, Nakoba, sneaky, able to get, get out. Now he has returned for cap, but only for a moment. That was a really smart play by Ballstar there, not to go too recklessly into base. It's certainly tempting, especially when it takes seemingly forever to get across the map, but... Uh... Uh, Ballstar makes, a, make, makes an interesting choice there. Instead of going for the tag, Pro winds up going through gate and uh, gets gated as a result. Oof. Yeah, Eagles has that juke juice. And it's able to give him just enough acceleration to get in front of Nakoba there. And that's going to wind up being a cap. So what could have been a return ultimately turned into a cap. Capitalist now up 2-1. I don't think even Blockbuster would have wanted that return. Oh. Four minutes left in the first half. 2-1 lead for the Capitalists. So a nice handoff there. Ballstar able to get out ahead of two. And, uh, oh, Nakoba, last man, able to position himself perfectly. That was really nice positioning. Ooh, great juke by Nakoba right there. Oh, wow. Nice block by Ballstar, be able to allow Eagles to get out there. But Eagles uh, smartly decides to double back, knowing that uh, his team probably telling him that Koba was not very well contained at that point. They didn't have the return. That was a very risky boost by Nakoba, especially when the defense knows that you're going top. Oh! Woo! Yeah, there was a, like a miscommunication timing. there for uh, the Rolling Golden Boulders, allowing another cap by Capitalists. And yeah, the timing on that was just unreal. Nice job, Eagles. Eagles able to boost himself into that button and get a return. That was really, really well done. Will the blocks be real here? Looks like oh. the blocks are real. Holsey just uh, manhandling Copernicus in the paint there. Uh, nice post-up opportunity there. Ball the blocks were block definitely real, but the overcommits were even realer. Nice oh. job. Dots fall oh. using his, his rolling bomb to do some damage. That was almost... Trying to just be insulting there. Oh my wow! Dodds Fall oh. takes an awesome boost and winds up bouncing off of one of the 90 degree tiles to be able to walk. I don't think I've ever seen that boost Holy like that to get God. around a block. Me neither. That was. I think that's the best cap I've seen. I didn't even know that was a boost time. path. I've never wow. seen anyone do that before. That was Dodds Fall. That was amazing. Holy crap. Or more like holy cap, am I right? Oh, put him <laughs> kitten panel, ladies and gentlemen. He's here. All wow. Week. Dodds falls. I think Dodds falls is just gunning for player of the week right now because it, you know it's really interesting because you know, like you had mentioned, <laughs> Dodds fall. Uh, you know, definitely very well known in Sockle. He, I think, might be in the lead right now for championships one. And you know, when he got picked up where he did in the auction draft. 
I remember some people questioning it, and I don't remember who. I just remember, you know, in the chat, there was some, like, really? Dodd's fault, really? I think he's showing why he was picked up where he was picked up in this game, because he's just, you know, he, he's he's just crushing it today. I don't know what else to say. Admittedly, I did question it as well, um, but I will, I will happily, happily say at this point that he has made me a Dodd's fall believer, to be sure. The the plays are absolutely perfect. His field awareness is on point. I couldn't be more impressed with how he's played today. So this game, uh, quickly going the way the first one did, currently a 5-1 lead for the Capitalists with just under a minute to go in the first half. I believe uh, the last game, it was about the same score at this point, and then I think the Capitalists poured one more on before halftime, so... We'll see if history repeats itself here. 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Capitalists currently winning by four. I would be very interested to... Ooh. And indeed, a 6-1 lead for the Capitalists with 17 seconds to go. Are we sure we didn't just put the first game on replay? I did, unless Iron really changed. I don't think so. Uh, that was just Three, unfortunate for two, uh, RGB there. That one, one, one. could have been a cap, but even the spawn, uh, even the spawns aren't working in their favor right now. So two caps for Eagles, two caps for for Ballstar. Uh, Holsey with only one cap. So kind of unusual to see Holsey not at the top of the leaderboard. But um, just a great first half. Um, both teams really played well. I mean, the bottom line is the Capitalists are just playing out of their minds right now. I don't know what else to say. I mean, there really isn't anything to say. The Capitalists have been playing exceptionally in the first game. They've been playing exceptionally in this game as well. Um, while I don't want to count out uh, RGB, which was the mistake I made last week, it's really difficult not to at this point with how well the Capitalists are playing. All right, so not a lot of talking in between games. Looks like we're going to have a really nice, short, and crisp broadcast here because it looks like we're starting our fourth half of play. Um, our second half on 45. Again, the score right now is 6-1 in favor of the Capitalists. Switch back to our in-game view. There we go. Oh, and kept flag. Dots fall wins with the kept flag. Nice. Good to know. Let's get that last tile. There we go. Perfect. Three, two, one. So two rolling bombs and a juke juice. No tag pros on either side. Holsey taking his rolling bomb straight into blue base, and he gets grabbed and just manhandled. He gets eaten alive, getting panda. Delicious. RGB's going to have to try and... Oh, that's a head of four if he can play this right. He uh, just goes very, very careful there. Decides to walk it in bottom. It looks like they just gave it to him at this point and wanted to reset. Yeah, they said this is 4B, it's a cap reset, and they reset. I think that they would have been able to catch up, uh, especially with the pathing that he took. If they had known he was going area. the way he was going and they had gone for that bottom boost, they could have got him. But I just don't think they would have ever expected him to go the yeah. way he went. Was and, it uh, going to be worth the risk? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Was that tag pro worth it for Nakoba? I don't think so either. I don't know. Tag pros are pretty tasty, Kitten Panda. That's true. They're green. Yeah, you glow green. You know what else is green? Tell me. Mold. I don't like mold. So Balls are able <laughs> to get good. past Ibis. Uh, Copernicus able to get out of base, and Dodds Fall winds up biting. So Copernicus with uh, what would have been a return for Cap, but Eagles smartly sits on the button and, and gates him. 
I mean, he didn't really have too much of an option there. I might have aimed myself for the spikes initially, but yeah. then again, I can't get through the spikes, so why would I do that? Well, I don't know. Why would you? So Ballstar in well positioned to take a, a, a nice block there, so Eagle's able to walk right around him for a, a cap to tie up this half 1-1. One, one, still a 5 cap advantage for the Capitalists. Holsey spiked Ooh. himself. That was more of an error on Private Major's part. I'm not sure what's going on with him this evening, but he left the regrab to almost meaninglessly chase into the wide open spaces. Oof. I think we're just seeing a lot of impatience from both teams. I Okay, so Copernicus should be able to boost in the flag here. Oh, and he just walks it in, but that works too. Yeah! RGB actually don't really have time to be patient. They're going to have to be super aggressive to even have a chance of coming back in this game. Yeah, so far, I mean, they're doing a pretty good job. And Private Major attempts to take that boost through the spikes, but uh, it actually bounces into someone not able to get in cleanly. Dots fall with a possibility here if Ballstar can set that block up for him, and it should be a Oh, Nakoba able to take that boost. Just too much time spent by Dots fall turning the corner there. Nice job, so choo-choo this half. Still a five cap lead for the capitalists. Copernicus going a little macro crazy. Come and kick it with a kitty on his way to the tube. To the tube. I guess it's tube. It's just how, how you would say that. <laughs> That's, yes. To the tube. Holsey able to get out ahead of two. Takes a kind of interesting path here. The blocks are real. Eagles and Dotswall just putting on a blocking clinic, clinic there against Nicova and Private Major. Leading to another cap for the Capitalists. Currently a six cap lead. Uh, aggregate nine to three. Ballstar takes that boost away from Private Major. and Oh, wow. Ooh. I can't believe that happened. Ooh. Ooh. This is like somebody put a bunch of marbles into a bag and just started shaking it. It's exactly like that. Oh, <laughs> Copernicus just gets very lucky with that rolling bomb, but uh, not able to turn it into a, a, a cappuccino just yet because the eagle's able to grab and get out. But Oh, man. There were too many things to comment on there for me to comment on all of them, so I didn't comment on most of them. But that last 30 seconds of play was just funny, and I kind of want to go watch it again. It was incredibly strange. I mean, how do you even, how would you explain what just happened to your friends? I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, you wouldn't because we don't tell people that we play Tag Pro. Yeah, I don't even know who I would tell. <laughs> hey, baby, I play with balls every night. Just won't go over well. So they're kind of 3D, but... They're not really, like, maybe they're just discs. Like, I don't even know how I'd go about explaining that. I don't really know. They they theoretically roll, but not really. I don't know. <laughs> they're like discs that slide, really, more than anything. It's kind of like a never-ending ultimate frisbee that just controls itself. All right, this should be a cap for uh, the capitalists who are going to widen and extend yeah! their lead, and Copernicus again saying, come and kick it with a kitty on his way to the troop. <laughs> Copernicus could kick it with me any day. Well, you're a kitty. It's true. And you might be on your way to the troop. I mean, I got a cap in majors today, so I'm obviously on my way to the troop. You, you got some majors minutes today? I got 17 minutes today. Look at you. It was He's all grown up, ladies and gentlemen, all grown up. Plus, I did get them last season as well, but that ended pretty disastrously. Nakoba just taking laps here. This game well out of hand. Uh, currently a 7 cap lead. I think we're at a 10-3 to 3 aggregate so far. Something like that. Eagles using that rolling bomb to stay alive for 
another moment, but I think his days are numbered here. Now he's going to be able to get around PM, and now Nakobe able to get that get that return. Just over three minutes to go. Holzi out ahead of two. Uh, doesn't take the boost and winds up paying for it. This has been kind of a strange game for me. I don't yeah. really know how to describe it. Yeah, I think part of the reason is that there's really, like, callouts are a little bit more confusing on this map. You have sort of like an outside and an inside, and I feel like communication on this map is always just more complex as a result. There's so many different ways you can go. If you're mid, I mean, you can circle around mid for days. What is mid? I think mid is where that pup is that Dice Ball just grabbed. I would define that as mid. Part of me was trying to be philosophical, but yeah. I'm glad you ex actually explained it. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> what mid is. Glad I could help. What is mid, anyway? <laughs> are we all mid, or are we top? Do we ever really cap? Oh, that's a good one. I would Oof. argue no. Yeah, I would argue no, too. I uh oh. Uh, uh oh. If it's not able to get behind that boost, and I think he was thinking of sniping, but there was no snipes to be had. If if I was playing defense the way that these guys were playing defense right now, I would be benched yes. for probably the rest of the season. Because rest of your life, probably. Probably, because there are there are standards in terms of like what you should be doing as offensive defense and they're following none of them. I mean how much how much of that do you chalk up to the fact that it's currently well let me add one to this now. It's a uh, a nine cap lead for the capitalists. I mean I think there's a certain aspect of just not caring anymore going on. Paul's just suppose walking so. another one in there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. RGB just, just making all kinds of, you know, impulsive, desperate grabs, just I mean they're not, uh... Oh, Ibis, please. Oh, dear. <laughs> Just as I was about to make a comment about how they're getting punished <laughs> for these desperate grabs, Ibis, uh, just chukes around and somehow gets out of base there. I don't know what happened. Oh, man. At oh, this, this point, should be a cap for RGB. It should be. Yes, it's, a, to a degree, not caring, but you have to have something to, to work off of for the next week, and... When you're making plays, like... Going off of re-grab and chasing around. I mean, it's something that you shouldn't have to pay for. Yeah, both teams, I think, are just having fun right now. Neither team's really concerned about containing. You know, we had a huge offensive explosion there, mainly caused by nobody having re-grab. And... I think RGB's really gunning for it, to be honest. I don't think they want to lose by that much. Not sure they have a choice here, Cotton. <laughs> oh. Three, two. All right, one. so that'll do it for a bunch of fireworks there in the end of the second half in a game that was already well out of hand. Uh, an aggregate score of let's see if I have this right, fourteen to no, no, fourteen to five, fourteen to five, a nine cap lead, nine cap Yikes. win for the capitalists. That's uh, that's brutal. That's quite a day for them. It's definitely rough. Um, I don't think that that score is going to really tell the tale of it. Uh, as as much as it was a domination by the capitalists, you know, RGB is a really good team, and the capitalists are certainly putting themselves as uh, one of the front runners right now. And I've been saying it for a couple weeks now. I I really like this team, and I think that they got something special going on. Yeah, just an amazing day. I mean, I don't feel like RGB played bad today. I mean, I do think that defensively they got uncharacteristically out of sync, and I'm not sure how much of that to attribute to, you know, was it just a bad day for them? Was it a ping thing based on playing on Sphere? Or is it just that the capitalist offense was just really hard to stop? And I think it was probably a combination of all three. Absolutely. So we let both teams uh, go ahead and say their GGs. Um, I'd ask them to come up here for commentary, but I'm not sure. I think Copernicus dropped out of the group before, um, before you saw me say that. So I think uh, let's go try to see if we can get a comment from Copernicus real quick.
Game Camp. Hey, good games, guys. Hey, guys, this is Ranger Radio. Um, first, just wanted to check in Copernicus. Definitely a tough game for you guys. Um, you know, not we're not used to seeing you guys get swept. Um, the defense seemed a little bit out of sync today, but I think a lot of that can be chalked up to the capitalists just um, playing incredibly well. Copernicus, wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, what you feel your team could have done differently today or, you know, what you can learn from this going forward for the rest of your season. Yeah, sure. Um, I think they definitely practiced a lot. They played very well, and uh, it definitely showed overall their game was just sharper. Um, I think the number one thing we should work on for next week is power-ups. Yeah. Definitely power-ups. We kind of lost it. Okay. Do you think there's anything else that might have impacted it? I mean, I noticed you guys played on Sphere today, and I know that West Coast teams lately have really been having trouble with Sphere. Were there ping issues on your side or anything like that? Yeah, we were getting a little bit of ping issues. Not as bad as some other weeks, thank goodness. But um, I wouldn't say it made the difference or anything, unlike some other weeks where the ping literally was the difference. All right. Well, tough loss. Um, you know, sorry to see that happen to you guys, but um, I still yeah, think you okay. guys played very well and look forward to seeing you guys bounce back next week. Thanks for streaming, man. Yeah, yeah you're very welcome, man. Totally happy to. All, All right. right. So we'll go ahead and head up to Capitalist. Why am I having trouble finding the Capitalist channel? Well, have a good night. Good All right. Take good, it easy. Keep it nice. Thanks night. a lot. I'm just blind. There it is. Game kitten. All right, guys, so here on uh, Ranger Radio, just wanted to come and congratulate you guys on an outstanding match today. Um, wanted to see, Eagles, if you had any commentary on, um, you know, what your team did today to just thoroughly dominate RGB. Uh, I don't know. We capitalized. Yeah, you guys did, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, Dodd's uh, Fall, um, one thing I wanted to make sure to comment on. So, there was a cap in this last game on 45 where you took one of the top boosts and bounced off of one of the 90 degree tiles to be able to get around a block. And I think Kit and I, Kit and Panda and I were both commenting, neither one of us has ever seen that boost used that way to get around a defender. It was really incredible. Um, is that something that you practiced, or did you just see an opportunity there and take it? Oh, funny story. That came, that started in Novice. When I was playing with Nos, we had a scrim, and he's like, yeah, we're playing. There's three in base. Do something nutty. So I did that. Well, I was blown away. I mean, that was one of the best caps I've seen this season, so that was outstanding. Um, you know, offensively and defensively, you guys just manhandled a very good team. I mean, I've had an opportunity to stream, um, you know, a few games from the Rolling Golden Boulders, and um, this is – by far the most I've seen um, Ibis and Private Major struggle against any opponents. So offensively, you guys kept them on their toes all day. Um, and defensively, you guys were able to put up some great blocks to allow caps. What do you think you take from this victory that will help you going forward in the rest of your season? Feel free to not all that, talk That's on you, <laughs> That's on you, Captain. Uh, yeah, well, I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I mean, they're a good team. And we beat them, so that's good. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea what to say. Eagle's a man of many words uh, with some, some <laughs> very I'll get some commentary comments. on it. I'm, Go ahead. Uh, somebody else talk. Yeah, Iron we were pretty comfortable on, pretty confident on Iron. Practiced that map a good bit, but uh, coming into 45, we were pretty unsure about it. Uh, we had a few strategies in mind, and they worked out for the most part. One of the problems we had during scrims was making sure somebody was always in front. Because it's pretty easy to get reset and get past four on 45, so I think overall we did pretty well on that. All right, guys. Well, it was a pleasure to stream your match. Congratulations again on a great thank game. Thank you very much for streaming. All right, guys. Yeah, this will do it for Ranger Radio, streaming. and wanted to put out a thank you to Wait, Panda radio? For... Yeah, well, it's kind of not really radio, Roll but it just, it just kind <laughs> it of sounds better. It has a nice better. ring. What am I going to call it? Ranger TV? It's just, it doesn't That's work. That's overused. That's not. That's yeah, overused. no, Ranger Radio. It's Ranger Radio. <laughs> Theoretically, if we do our jobs well, you don't even need to be watching the game. You can just listen. You know what's going on. <laughs> right? Am I right? So thanks okay. a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Kitten Panda, thanks again for commentating. You did a great job again. And, uh, My pleasure. Do it. All right, guys. Have a good night. Yep. Have a good night.